despite all my efforts to sit down and have a nice calm talk with you guys about sunscreen the day had other plans bye, yes mommy bye mom and um Hayana's sick and so here we are <laughs> this is what a tired exhausted mom with sunscreen looks like so let's break it down and talk a little bit more about sunscreen. Why? Sun gives us happiness um, and energy, uh, UV radiation of the sun is directly linked to causing skin cancer. That's already proven, we don't need to reprove it. Let's just learn how to protect ourselves and how to make choices. Now about UV radiation, there are two main types that we are concerned about and those are UVA and UVB. Um, radiation. UVA, you can think of A for aging, which is responsible for the aging effects of the sun, and UVB rays are responsible for the burning that comes along with that. What is SPF? SPF stands for sun protection factor, and um, that is a number that tells us, for example, if my skin and direct sunlight with no protection would were to burn in five minutes, if I have on correctly SPF uh, 30, that um, five times 30, that factor is 30, um, it would take 150 minutes of my skin with correct application of SPF 30 to burn. Um, now, although 150 minutes is technically more than 120 minutes, which is two hours, you still do need to reapply your sunscreen every two hours. That is just a rule of thumb for any number SPF you have. We recommend SPF 30 to 50. Um, that is uh, between SPF 30 and 50, you have 97 to 98% coverage against UVA radiation, UV radiation. Um, and so anything above 50 is great, but it's not going to offer you that much more benefit. A lot of times you'll see like SPF 50 plus, uh, which is, is great. So I wouldn't go out and like say, oh, I must have something that's SPF 100 or 90 or 80 or whatever that is. 30 to 50 will do great. Um, okay, so let's move on to talk about the types of sunscreens. We have physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens are sometimes called mineral um, and sometimes they're just called sun block instead of sunscreen. And chemical sunscreens sometimes can be called organic sunscreens. So let's talk about the physical ones right now. Uh, why are they called sun block um, or mineral? So sun block or physical sunscreens, when you put them on, let me show you. They leave this white cast. They're a little bit thicker. They're usually comprised of um, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now this won't stay this white, it will absorb but that's, you know, applying it is just, you know, it just requires a little bit more effort. Uh, but there are benefits to it, which we'll go into in a little bit. There. Um, and so these are comprised, again, of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide mainly. Um, and they are not absorbed into the skin. And um, they protect you from UV radiation by reflecting the sunlight off of your skin. So you don't get burned. Uh, this particular one I just put on is Sheer Zinc Mineral Sunscreen by Neutrogena. We'll talk about products afterwards. Chemical sunscreens. Avobenzone. Um, Hamosylate, Octisylate, Octocrylene, Oxybenzone, Octinoxate, among others. So there's a lot, but those are the most common ones. Now let's look at up how we're applying this one. It's a little bit thinner. And the zinc oxide, you see, it's already absorbing. So a little bit easier to apply. You can tell there's a little bit difference. This one has a little bit of white cast. This one, not so much. Well, yeah, slight difference. Again, not that much. Um, and so a lot of times choosing a sunscreen really um, just depend on, depends on your personal preference. Whatever you're actually going to use is what I recommend you using. So um, there are some concerns with chemical sunscreens. With chemical sunscreens, they work by, uh, so they absorb into your skin. As you can see, they absorb pretty fast. 
and when the sun light hits you it absorbs that uv radiation it converts it into heat which is then released from your body so you don't get burned that way so two different mechanisms but they both offer great sun protection uh, some people are concerned that with that absorption of the chemical sunscreens um, they can act as endocrine disruptors among many other things that we use in our daily life um, in our modern life um, so again your preference. Uh, the other thing about chemical sunscreens, some people with sensitive skin, young children, uh, people with eczema, people with uh, that develop um, heat rashes, those like bumpy uh, red rashes from the sun or heat, um, they tend to be more sensitive towards chemical sunscreens. So people with those sorts of conditions tend to prefer the physical sunscreens or the sun, uh, sun blocks, anything with titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Um, however, um, one of the main culprits of, of the skin irritation is oxybenzone. It's one of those chemical sunscreens. And a lot of products nowadays you'll see say oxybenzone free. So for example, this one I just applied by Sunbum. It's SPF 50, uh, premium moisturizing sunscreen lotion, broad spectrum SPF, water resistant to up to 80 minutes. Um, again, if it's washed off, you still do need to reapply. But um, this one does not have oxybenzone in it. Hypoallergenic, oxybenzone free, um, octinoxate free. So those are all things you'll see on more and more products. The other concern about chemical sunscreens is a lot of um, beaches are banning any sunscreen that contain oxybenzone and octinoxate, but they have been shown to bleach coral reefs. So that, you know, for people who are more concerned about the environment, they might want to shy away from um, chemical sunscreens that contain oxybenzone or octinoxate. When do we need to apply sunscreen? 15 to 30 minutes before you go out into the sunlight. Try to avoid being out between 10 and 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's when the UV rays are the most intense. Um, and so if you can't be um, inside, you have to be outside, you know, you're on vacation, whatever it is, um, you need to religiously apply your sunscreen. Okay, uh, UPF clothing. Um, again, we see that a lot nowadays in swimwear and sportswear. Uh, those are great options. You don't need to put sunscreen under those because those act as your sunscreen. So, I mean, for people who don't like to apply sunscreen, you don't like to reapply constantly, just throw on a long sleeve shirt, whatever it is, a short sleeve shirt, and then uh, put sunscreen on whatever is exposed. Um, they really do protect you. Now, especially for um, infants, um, you know, ages zero to six months. Um, it is not recommended for infants to put sunscreen because their, th their skin is not fully developed. It's really thin and it's um, more prone to irritation and rashes from any kind of sunscreen. And so the best thing for um, your infants is to keep them out of direct sunlight, keep them in the shade. If you're at the beach, keep them under a tree, in a tent, under an umbrella. Do not put them under direct sunlight. Um, put them in UPF protective clothing or clothing that does not penetrate the sun. So this shirt, for example, if I was to hold it up to the sun and it, I don't see any sun shining through, then that's going to offer me pretty good protection. So uh, use your judgment with your infants. Keep them out of direct sunlight. Increase hydration, whatever you can do. But sunscreen is approved for um, infants six months all the way to adults. Moving on to some formulations, I am not a fan of the spray sunscreens at all. I don't think you can accurately measure how much you're putting on and I don't like inhaling it. You know, I, I don't think that it's necessary. Um, if you like it, then great, you know, at least you're using sunscreen. And so I recommend spraying it into your palm, rubbing it and then putting it on. That way you have a better idea of how much sunscreen you're applying and that you're applying with even coverage how much sunscreen to apply. So for your face, uh, you want at least a quarter teaspoon. And you can measure that out if you want with a quarter teaspoon just until you get a feel for it. But that's like about this much for your face. Don't forget your neck, the tops of your ears, any area that's exposed, so the back of your neck. Um, and just kind of a tip, 
when I'm driving every day, um, I put sunscreen on my hands or anywhere that's going to be exposed. Normally I like to wear long sleeves, but my hands are exposed and I don't miss my hands ever because they're like in direct sunlight many hours of the day, dropping off kids and picking them up. So, um, that's how much. Now, if you are swimming or you're out with a lot of skin exposed for your entire body, it is recommended to use one to two ounces of sunscreen, depending on how much um, exposed areas you have. So uh, one to two ounces, you can measure that out to just get a feel for it. Um, but the SPF number that is listed on the sunscreen is tested for that amount of application. And so if you're not applying that much, you're really not getting the SPF 50 that is listed on the bottle. So keep that in mind. No matter what SPF, again, it has to be reapplied every two hours or after you get wet or after you dry off with a towel because you are rubbing the product off and so you're not getting adequate coverage. You wanna look for um, oil-free, non-comedogenic, uh, things that won't clog your pores. I'm gonna look for fragrance-free, um, if you have sensitive skin, um, oxybenzone-free. And a few other points uh, or helpful tips. If you, uh, as a part of your daily skincare regimen, uh, if you wanna apply a moisturizer, you should apply your moisturizer first and then your sunscreen. Wait until the moisturizer is fully absorbed and uh, it's not like getting greasy or anything and then apply your sunscreen. If you have other skincare products that you're using, uh, like creams, lotions, um, and for any treatment purposes, you put those on first and then you put on your sunscreen last. The only time you will put some, something on top of your sunscreen um, will be if it is a insect repellent because that has to be the last thing. Um, another question I have is like, how about those moisturizers that have SPF in them? And while those are great, especially if the SPF is like 30 or above, um, those are, you know, because they're moisturizers, they tend to be a little bit more like greasy. And like, let's be real, how often are you going to reapply a moisturizer throughout the day? Probably just once in the morning and then you're done. So I like having an SPF um, to reapply. Some things that I like for my kids, um, I use this one a lot. It's just the Copper Tone Pure and Simple SPF 50. Again, it's um, paraben free, dye free, fragrance free, water resistant, up to 80 minutes. And this one is just zinc oxide. So for um, my kids, I use this a lot more often than I use other ones. This is just like our daily. And because it's thicker, uh, this is similar to the one I put on this hand earlier. I like to use this makeup brush, especially on the face. It just makes it a lot more easy um, to uh, apply on my kids. Uh, I'm not like sitting rubbing it in, so it's nice. Let me show you a little bit how that would work. See, just much easier. Okay. Uh, they do have like sunscreen brushes on Amazon, but I'm sure you guys probably have one that'll work at home already, so don't worry about that. Um, another way to get around the um, white tint that stays behind physical sunscreens, they offer a lot of formulations that have a tint to them. So if you can see this one, Neutrogena Mineral UV Tint Face Liquid. This is just titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So. I love, love, love this for every day. It gives me a little bit of a tint. I actually have it on right now. Um, I don't wear makeup every day. Actually, when I wear makeup, my kids think I'm like running away or something because it's that rare. Um, and so I just like having some sort of coverage. And I know that it's, um, it's a physical sunscreen. It's gonna act like sunblock. It's so lightweight. I love it. Um, and so those, you know, for people with a little bit darker skin tones, the tinted, Physical sunscreens are a great option. Um, another thing I like for my kids, this is a chemical sunscreen, but it is a roll-on. It's the Banana Boat Kids Sport. Um, it's SPF 60 plus, again, dye-free, uh, fragrance-free, and you just apply it on like this. And you can kind of see the tracks where you're putting to make sure you have even coverage. And you just rub it in, and it is like, I have nothing on. I love it. 
Um, and so also, this is a, for reapplication. I love this on my kids. Again, real quick, if we're like in a hurry, I don't have a brush, I don't have anything. I usually keep this and another one in my purse for my kids. And it's just so nice. It's so nice to just know that they're protected and it's so easy to apply. Um, this one is oxybenzone free. So again, less uh, prone to cause irritation. My kids do have sensitive skin and they do fine with this. Um, the main ingredients are avobenzone, homosalate, octis, oct octosalate, and octocrylene. Um, another one I use on my face daily is this one by Mirad. Um, it's oil and pore control mattifier, broad spectrum SPF, uh, SPF 45, and it has the same um, chemical sunscreen ingredients as the banana boat one. And those were the avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. So no oxybenzone or uh, octinoxate. This is the one I had on in the morning and then I reapplied this UV tint one later on. Um, okay, now this one, I really like this. Um, so it's kind of like a deodorant stick. This one's by Neutrogena, Mineral Ultra Sheer um dry touch face and body stick so it's not runny it's just so easy to apply i just rub it in and like when they say dry touch it's legit it really does feel like you have nothing on um, and so applying it you can see the tracks initially and i like that because you can make sure you're applying it evenly amazing amazing i love this and this is just zinc oxide so if you're using it on your face, on your kids, it's not gonna run into their eyes. So uh, I'm sure with this information, you should be able to make some informed decisions. Um, again, uh, the um, chemical sunscreens, uh, try to look for something that's oxybenzone free, dye free, um, uh, fragrance free, fragrance free and dye free for any of them, but look for something oxybenzone free specifically for the chemical sunscreens. Um, and broad spectrum SPF, whatever you choose. Make sure the bottle says broad spectrum. Um, what else? I wanna make sure we're not missing anything. Oh, for the physical sunscreens, uh, some products or some new formulations are a little bit thinner. They're like liquid form um, and they're comp These are some of my favorites again. Um, if you have any questions, please comment. Um, I will try to find links for everything I talked about. Probably just through Amazon, because you can get everything through Amazon. <laughs> just a one click away. Uh, and yep, happy shopping and stay safe in the sun and enjoy the summer. Bye.